Hey there, Dan Phileas with ISU Extension and Outreach Horticulture here in the Sweet Corn Patch. I'm doing a research trial here this year funded by Iowa Department of Ag and Land Stewardship and USDA through a specialty crop block grant. First, I mean right up next to me here, we've got the tassel. This is what is providing pollen and is going to pollinate the ear, which is down here. And each pollen grain comes down, lands on one of these silks, which it then uh, pollinates an individual kernel. And each one of these silks is going to be connected to a different kernel in the ear down here. And that is going to be making that corn swell up and give you that nice, juicy uh, sweet corn ear that you want to eat. There's lots of types of sweet corn. We got sugary enhanced, super sweets, the industry is largely moving towards super sweets. They hold their sugars better, they're sweeter in general. Younger customers typically want that super sweet corn. And the problem with super sweet corn has been that it doesn't germinate well in cold soil. So a grower has to plant one with more vigor, which is like a synergistic or an SE sweet corn in the early slot which presents another problem, which is that if SE corn and SH2 corn cross-pollinate, then it ruins the quality for eating of them, of both, and but primarily the later SH2 corn. The holy grail would be if you could just plant SH2 from the get-go all the way through your season and not have to worry about that. And this project is looking at planting different varieties that have been identified with, as promising by seed companies, by the breeders themselves, by growers that I've talked to here in Iowa, and looking at them at different planting dates throughout the early spring to identify which ones come up the best so that growers can focus on that so they can potentially get earlier sweet corn to market. Because people with early sweet corn typically hold on to that market share. There's a few different types of sweet corn, uh, sweetness levels and um, colors. First of all, there's white, there's yellow, and then there's a mix of white and yellow. You need to keep the white separated in space or time from the yellow or the bicolor if you want it to stay white. The bicolor needs to be separated from the yellow so that it has the white ones in there also. And the sweetness levels, you've got the old, good, quote unquote, in the seed catalogs, we call it good old fashioned corn flavor. And that's the SU, sugary. There's SE, which is a little bit sweeter. Sugary enhanced is what SE stands for. And then you get SH2, which is the super sweets. And the market generally is moving more towards super sweets. There, there has been a lot of breeding work done to make the SH2 super sweets less uh, crunchy there was a harder texture, uh, not as creamy of a bite to them, but a lot of work has been done to make those uh, more uh, pleasant eating experience. And they're, they're really, really good right now. But in the meantime, S there has been some also some breeding work that has combined. So on the same ear of corn, you'll get some SE kernels and some super sweet kernels, SH2. And those are called synergistic. They have quote unquote, the best of both worlds, if you will. Oh my God, it's so good. Sweet corn does not need to be cooked, but it is, uh, it is better cooked. <laughs> it's really good, fresh like this, but. You, I mean, that's the preferred way to do it. It brings out, you know, tenderizes it a little bit more, changes the flavor a bit. The, like, there's a lot of like upfront, like white sugar, uh, sweetness it, like this, but if you boil it, that gets muted a little bit and the deepness of the flavor comes out. But I mean, it's a good idea to boil it anyway because because for, for food safety purposes and all that. So, yeah, but generally speaking, most of the vegetable farmers I know are, are trying it fresh out of the field and, and, and to test, uh, you know, readiness. Um, you get a nice deep bite to it, then, that, then you know that it's ready because it, it can be ready, but if your teeth don't sink right into it, it's not necessarily ready. Yeah, and I forgot to say SH2, what does that stand for? The SH stands for shrunken. And when you get those kernels uh, in the, say the bag of seed, they're just like a little raisin of a sweet corn kernel. They, they're really shrunken. And consequently, they're, they're also smaller. They have less vigor in the soil. So in 
early season slot when the soil is a little cool they just don't have typically the super sweets don't have the same vigor of getting up out of the soil so some growers have in the past planted an se sweet corn first or a synergistic sweet corn that has better vigor and then they'll move to sh2 later in the season what's one of your favorite varieties oh my goodness for eating you know i uh I, I, I love the super sweets and it's interesting like the uh, generational uh, divide like older customers typically prefer the SEs and the creamy eating and the younger customers want the burst of sweetness from the SH2s it, 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 it's interesting how that is but I'm, I'm I like them all but I think I would lean towards the the newer te more tender super sweets uh, variety name that I really like gosh I've, I'm really taken with bolt uh, right now bolt XR it's a good blend of good early season vigor for a super sweet and also really nice sweetness and uh, depth of flavor I think so peaches and cream is one that has a really good name that's an se a sugary enhanced so people used to grow it a lot but i don't know any growers who still grow peaches and cream but the signs will still say peaches and cream because my goodness could you get a better like name for sales than peaches and cream it's like honey crisp right but uh that one's more you know you have to have honey crisp but peaches and cream is just like it's this idea of yellow and white kernels Bi it's just bicolor. It's become synonymous with just bicolor sweet corn. And yeah, people just like that idea. I like that idea. The data I collect is all about dates. It's not about yield numbers or anything. Like that, that data has already been collected. The importance of this trial about which ones are best for the early slot is that there hasn't been any university done peer reviewed research on that it's all been done by the corn breeders and so it's just a third party sort of thing looking at which ones of these are going to come up early not just relying on the description in a seed catalog that is entirely provided by the breeders so the like you asked like <laughs> eating quality ear height number of ears all that information has been done in many studies by other universities and it's it, that that information can be piece together or fit together with the date information that I'm collecting and uh, make a complete picture. <laughs> and, and happily ever after, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be the end of my, uh, of, of, of the peer reviewed paper that, <laughs> in conclusion, happily ever after. There you go. <laughs>